partied harder, o- Osh or Ovi? <laughs> It's, it's tight. Right? <laughs> right? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's, like it's but between Osha's beer monster and Ovi diving through fountains, like it's that they yeah. were they had a neck and neck battle going on. Ice is back and we oh, what? What the f Holy shit, dude. We're on ep like one What just happened? One twenty something, and that was a f- disaster but what about this ice is back and we are ready that works you know what it works for opening day okay okay see now okay. maybe we're on to something but until then ice is ready and we are back with another episode of the empty netters podcast i am your host dan powers aka dp with me as always cp the as master always as always the master himself we've got an unbelievable interview for you today Devonte smith pelly stanley cup champion with the washington capitals joins the podcast and also about to be a champion of golf yeah about to be a p-a-g-t champion Come he's gonna on. be lifting cups all he does is lift cups dude lifts cups in washington lifts cups is in sf lifts cups at the at the welcome party probably 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 i'd be upset if he didn't but Devo is the man. You're going to have a blast with all these cup stories, his crazy journey all around the league, including the KHL. So fucking funny. Insane. But Devo's the man. We're having a blast with him right now. Make sure you guys have a blast with him in this interview. We'll kick it to it right now. We are joined by a great beauty right now. He is a Scarborough, Ontario native. He is a U-17 gold medalist. A World Juniors bronze medalist, the 42nd overall pick in the 2010 NHL draft by the Anaheim Ducks, and a Stanley Cup champion with the 2018 Washington Capitals. Devontae Smith Pelly, welcome to the Empty Netters podcast. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate it. Um, I see a lot of your guys' clips, so it's good to finally be on. Yeah, there you go. We had to get you in here. <laughs> That's yeah, huge. Yeah. That's we just have a we have a guerrilla strategy. We just bombard everybody with clips till they're like, "Who are these fucking idiots?" It's I'm working. jumping on it's the pod. I see it a lot. It's working. <laughs> That's amazing, dude. Yeah, it just becomes Pavlovian at this point. Yeah, so you yeah. just hear our yeah. stupid voices, and people are like, "Okay, I gotta get in here. Yeah. Let's see what's going on." We were just uh, we were just talking. You're up in Toronto. It's a beautiful, another beautiful day. How's summer been going? My summer has been great. Um, you know, it, it's, I've been playing a lot of golf. That's all I've been doing pretty much. A uh, couple trips, not really vacation like, but, uh, you know, I've been to Vegas, I've been to Montreal, I've been to New York, just small little trips, but, um, a lot of golf, a lot of chilling now, uh, a lot of the Olympics. Yeah. So it's been, it's been nice and relaxing. It's, uh, a lot different from my playing days where, you know, working out and skating and schedule. It's nice just to be chilling, relaxing. Feeling guilty when you're not in the gym or shooting pucks, yeah. you know, now I'm yeah, in Vegas, exactly. dude. <laughs> like this is way better. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's much better. And not to mention when hockey season comes around, it gets so busy. Right now is the perfect time to just golf and chill. Like, yep. That is what we should be doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like I said, like it's, it's great not having, you know, much of a schedule, Especially around this time, it's getting closer to camp. The workouts are getting harder. Yeah. Skating, a lot of bag skating and stuff like that. It's it's good to be outside and uh, you know talking to my friends who are still skating. You know, I meet them at the golf course. They're sore and um, <laughs> and, and I'm feeling great out there. So. Yeah, swings the swing is loose. Devo swings loose, dude. All the other boys got yeah. back problems. It's a nightmare, dude. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Uh, well, I, well, I love me. We were saying too, but I love me a Montreal summer weekend, dude. Like, because oh, Vegas yeah. is too hot actually right now. So Montreal, that yeah. that's a great spot. Yeah. Have you have you guys gone to uh, Grand Prix or anything like that? Dude, no. We are dying yeah. to go. Is that what oh, you went yeah. for? Uh, no. Well, I went like you know eight years in a yeah, row, yeah. so I kind of took this one off. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but I suggest you guys get out there for for a Grand Prix weekend. It would be. Uh, It'll show you some things. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think we yeah. have to do that. I imagine there, there would be some nice sights for us there. Dude, we were actually thinking yeah. about next month heading up there for the uh, President's Cup. So that might yeah. be a nice oh, yeah. little Montreal weekend as well. Yeah, that'll be a nice little trip. Um, maybe I'll come up there. Maybe I'll come I was going to say, let's dial, let's dial it's that in, far. dude. Let's dial it's that not in. Too yeah. far. I, I, that was a very subtle way of me planting that idea. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> that might be a good little boys weekend, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, That's... it's not too far. I can... Uh, 
hop on the train. It's about four hours, and I'm there. Easy, dude. There you go. He, that was the drive from Maine. It was so sneaky easy, yeah, too. Yeah. It's like so, five-hour yeah. drive, oh, yeah. bang. So just getting yeah. across the border, but even that was chill as hell, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they just wave everyone. Like, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm here to get hammered with my buddies. And they were like, yep, yeah. come on in. Yeah. We, we, yeah. We, we had, in. Go ahead. We had a couple <laughs> border crossings on the way back where the guys at the border would be like, have a good time, boys. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, holy shit. <laughs> Bumpers ripped off my car. Yeah. You know? They can like, smell yeah. it on us. <laughs> Red eyes. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. Oh shit, Devo. One thing we wanted to ask because I love, I love when I look at um, someone's rookie year and just see like the their first taste of the NHL, right? Like who they mm -hmm. jump in with, and and sometimes it's guys. You know, you look at Celebrini on the Sharks, and it's like. You know, I love a lot of those dudes, but they're, they're lacking legends, let's say, mm -hmm. right? You know, and then I look at you and you come in as a 19 year old with with team, a 41 year old Timu, Corey Perry, <laughs> Bobby yeah. Ryan, Saku Koivu, you know, MVPs, Hall of Famers, Getz, Getzloff. Like, what was that shock factor like as you as you Seriously. enter the league to the Ducks with those boys? Um, it was scary. It was scary. <laughs> I mean, I, even looking back, I think Getzlaff and Perry were like 26 or 25. And I, I just felt like they were so much older than me. And like, um, obviously team of Solani, like it, it was nice though, that all those guys were great guys. You know, sometimes, um, you know, you could see older guys treat the younger guys a little tough. You yeah. know what I mean? But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, team, was great to me. Uh, Getzlaff, Perry, all those guys are great to me. Bobby Ryan, um, you know, I was alone on the first American Thanksgiving. He had me over at his house for Thanksgiving and stuff like that. Like, did he cook? Uh, those guys. Uh, he, I don't think he did. Yeah. I don't think he cooked. <laughs> you I guys, we ordered we ordered Burger there, King, but, but it was I, nice. I it was nice. In the kitchen. Yeah. I didn't see him in the kitchen much, but um, yeah, those guys were great to me, um, and I'm thankful because um, just you know, talking to some guys around the league, some of my friends who played young, like it's it's not always like that. It's not always where. The older guys are, you know, you know, they may be nice, but they, you know, included me into everything and, and made sure I was all right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, what you, I know you played on a line with Timu for, you know, a short little yeah. stint there in that first year. There was yeah. that, I'm obviously everyone has those moments in your first year where you're like, holy shit, I'm in the NHL. You're getting yeah. your first goal and all shit like that. But did you have a quick moment of when you're looking across the line at a guy who's like 20 years older than you and you're like, oh my God, I'm playing with teams yeah. and still nasty. You're yeah, like, Jesus yeah, Christ, yeah, yeah. he's 41. Yeah, yeah. There, there were a lot of times where, uh, you know, we were coming to the bench and kind of like, hey, Devo, did you see me? And I'm like, oh, I promise <laughs> if I saw you, like I would try and give it to you. Like that's all I'm trying to do. So yeah. um, it, it was it was a little bit nerve wracking. I, I played with Getzap and Perry a little bit that year too. And uh, they have all these, they're pretty much running two man game out there. They have all these plays and all these, and I'm just watch looking and trying to figure it out. It was, it was a little bit nerve wracking, but as I got older, um, you know, going into, um, I was about 21 and 22, I felt more comfortable there. Um, but at 19, it was, it was a lot, it was a lot to handle. It yeah. was, um, it was extremely, extremely nerve wracking because those guys are also intense too. Like if, you know, if you're not getting it done, um, I, I would know. I they would, don't yeah, got time for it. Yeah, yeah. And and I imagine off the ice too, right? Just because, like, of course, on the ice, you're learning from them. You're a sponge. But off the ice, just showing your life on the road in the NHL, I imagine that was its own journey with those guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, their their life at their point, that point was a little bit different than yeah. mine. But, <laughs> but um, it's actually funny. That was before the lockout. So Getzlaff and Perry, I think they were still like roommates at that point. They're like 27 years old. So that was, that was actually interesting. But um, yeah, getting to hang out with those guys on the road and, um, you know, have a couple beers with Timu and just talk. Like, I mean, we're, when we're at the rink, it's, you know, it's, it's business, but just talk and tell stories and tell them, you know, what I saw when he was on TV and just get to chat on a different level was, was, uh, was really, really nice. What was it like going from Ontario to Southern California? Like, did you... You know, were you like, holy shit, this place is amazing? Did it take a while to adjust to like the lifestyle, the food, you know, just the vibes there? Um, yeah, it was a it was a shock effort, but I mean, it was a good shock. Uh, I, I lived right on the beach, like my literal back door was on uh, Newport Beach. Um, one thing as I got older and you know got traded to some colder climates is I, I wish I took advantage of it more. Um, yeah, yeah, true. You know, I, I just. <laughs> 
I just started golfing last summer. Like I wish when I was 19, I would just be golfing every other day. And, um, you know, I wish I learned how to surf or something like that. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I went for some walks. You know, a little bit but, that's all right but we'll I'm, take it yeah 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 but i you know i'm 19 i'm just like just going with the flow i wish um you know looking back at, at 32 now um yeah i wish i was golfing and you know surfing or something like that but yeah. um I, I did enjoy my time there yep yeah. and hey there's still time baby we'll yeah. get you on that oh, board yeah. yeah we'll get you on oh, that yeah. board and man <laughs> That rookie season was pretty wild for you because you came in, did really well with the Ducks, but then you get loaned out to the World Junior team, mm -hmm. which is, that's such a funny, interesting thing that I'd love to hear from you about because it's like, on the one hand, anytime you get to represent your country is unreal, but you're obviously also in the flow of, you know, first year in the NHL, you want to make a good impression, you want to stay up in that league, and then you mm -hmm. get there and immediately break your foot against Finland, which is like... Yeah. You know, the one time you're not wearing shot blockers, unbelievable. Yeah. So yeah, what exactly. was that whole thing going through your mind of, you know, sticking with the boys, staying positive, making sure you guys medal, and then also keeping mm -hmm. that mentality of like, I don't want to lose the momentum and the rhythm I've got right now of being an NHL player. Like, how do you balance those things? Um, well, for me, like when it was starting to get into November, December-ish, um, I wanted to play World Juniors. Yeah, to be honest. yeah, I Hell wanted yeah. to play. Fuck yeah! Yeah, but <clears throat> the year before, um, my junior head coach was actually the coach, and I was a leading scorer, and um, I didn't get picked. So like, I was I was pissed off not at him. Like, I love him, but I was pissed off, and um, kind of used that into jumping into the NHL and like screw these guys I'm making the NHL now they're gonna have to beg me but when it got closer to time I was like yeah I want to go so yeah bad. yeah <laughs> so so it like when they told me I was we never it was so weird like we never talked about it um I think before the last game we played in like St. Louis or something I saw one of my buddies Brett Connolly got sent back and I was like oh like I don't know did he ask like what yeah, happened right. and, um we never talked about it. we played I, I I think I scored that night too and instantly after the game, they're like, all right, you're going to stay and go to the World Juniors. And I was just like, oh, okay, like I don't have any clue. I have nothing like it. They didn't tell me beforehand. Um, but I was excited. I was excited. And that was always the dream as a kid is playing on the World Junior team. Uh, finally got my shot and was playing a big role. I was playing on the half wall on the power play. Yeah. It was <laughs> like I was feeling, oh I was God. feeling great. I, yeah. was, I was feeling so good. And then... Um, like you said, I took off my shot blockers because I'm a skill guy now here. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> and what happens first game is, is obviously I block a shot and break my foot. But um, <laughs> the whole experience, like st getting to stay there and uh, watch the games in, in Edmonton and Calgary, the atmosphere was, um, it was pretty crazy. Obviously, it didn't work out in the end, but um, just getting a chance to be involved and, and see those games uh, was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. How, dude, how pissed were you when you broke your foot? Like, did you know yeah. immediately? Yeah, you that was my next question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me? Because I, 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 you know, that's how I played as blocking shots and stuff and taking them off the foot. But this one, it, it, it was different immediately. And yeah, um, I tried to play another shift, and like I, I, I couldn't even move. So um, I knew I was pissed. My, my, my dad was pissed. I took off my shot blockers. Everyone was just pissed. It was just so. It was a. It was so dumb. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it is what it is. I'm I'm still not over it, but it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be either. I'd be oh so my mad. god! Is it is it better? No, it's worse. I was gonna say, is it better they didn't win gold because you couldn't be out there? But no, you would it would have still been oh, sick. No, yeah. I mean, I still would have. Yeah, I mean, I'm still on the roster. You know? Yeah, exactly. So, I got that medal, baby. Um, yeah, yeah. It, like, I, I, it sucks to say I don't even know where the bronze medal is. Like, I know, <laughs> I know. You know, people say looking back, you'll be, you know look back and be like oh well, i was a bronze medalist that's pretty cool but <laughs> no it was it was gold or anything yeah or, it's or uh especially at home turf that, dude the that, boys gotta yeah. do it on home turf that bronze medal's yeah. hanging on the wall in the new <laughs> apartment still somewhere yeah, yeah. Like some, yeah, some guy's living on the knows. beach and he's like i don't know what this is but yeah. it's been here forever <laughs> yeah exactly so man it was it was it was tough um like i said it was my doing though it was just dumb 19 year old thing to do is i've been wearing shop boxes for years and I feel no. like 
I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say you're being way too hard. Yeah, on dude. Like you're acting like you went out there without shoulder pads on. Like you took something that's yeah. not totally. I mean, you, you know, made a good play, just, dude. You blocked the shot. It's something I had worn forever. Yeah. It wasn't really. It wasn't hindering anything. It didn't matter. It was just like an extra protection, and I, I just took it off because I was. You know, I'm on the half wall on the power play. Why would I block yeah. a shot, right? And then yeah. I just go back. I'm the man my now, dude. Mode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I exactly. imagine it was. It was dumb. I imagine your dad watching that game and like he knows you don't have the shot blockers on. You step in front of a shot and he's like, God fucking damn it, Devo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah and that's, that's the first thing he said is, why did you take off the shot blockers? And I mean, I didn't say to him like, well, I'm on the half wall. Just yeah, like, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I, I just, I just did it. Like, it was just so dumb. But it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah still dream come true. Still great experience. Yeah. And I'm glad, yeah, yeah, I'm I mean, glad I you got there. The team. I still, um, you know, I still played some of that first game. I yep. still have my jersey. I was wearing an A. Like that's crazy. So yeah, sick. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. God. Yeah. The great point, dude. An A on a Canada jersey. Are you shitting me? That's amazing. Yeah. Like yeah. it was still. I'm um, still have lifelong friends on that team. It was. It was cool, but um, rough at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Well, I, now I want to talk about um, your coming to Washington because. It's an interesting ride, dude. You had a bit of a grind there where it's like, we talked about it, you know, taste of the NHL and being a business. It's like, you're having a good season in Anaheim, traded to Montreal. Having a good season in Montreal, traded to Jersey. Bought out in Jersey, and now it's- After, by the way, buzzing in Jersey. Yeah. Dude, like, you couldn't <laughs> miss in Jersey, you know? And now yeah. it's gut check time, right? And there were two really cool things I saw that you said. One was that guys like Willie and Osh- we're like, listen, dude, you have as good a chance as anybody to make this team, so come here. And two, yeah. Trot sitting you down and kind of being one of the first coaches to be like, well, I guess extremely candid and honest with you about here's what I think about your game, here's where I think you can help us, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. can you tell us what about those two factors and any others <clears throat> that put in your mind the I'm bringing my belongings to Washington because I'm making this team no matter what attitude that you came there with? Yeah, like you said, um, <clears throat> it was a grind to get there. Um, but that summer, you know, I kind of got I got bought out late, like right before free agency. So you're kind of behind the eight ball. You know, talking to teams, I, I work out with Brett Connolly and Tom Wilson. So, you know, I said, hey, like Washington call, like, what do you guys see? Those are both right wingers. And we're also good friends. So, you know, we have a friendship where if I was going to take one of their jobs or something, they'd be like, well, like, you know, yeah, yeah. don't come here. Yeah. But they, they were, they were like, no, like you can easily, you know, slot in on the right side. We can all play on the right side. You know, Osha's the other guy, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, there's a spot there. There's going to be a lot of turnover because the year before they were like ridiculously stacked and the money just wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like you, you, there's a spot right there. It's wide open. You should come. And um, once they said that, you know, I called my agent and kind of said, all right, it's Washington. So, <clears throat> and that summer was just, you know, I signed it two way, but that summer was, I'm, I'm going to Washington. I don't even, mm -hmm. I'm not even worried about, you know, how far Hershey is from Washington. I'm yeah. going to Washington. <laughs> I, that's where I'm playing. And, um, I had a great camp and obviously, you know, the year went the, the year, the way it went. Yeah. Well, hold on. I want to hear about that because, you know, as a fan, watching that season, it felt like that was that season where Ovi kind of recalibrated and he was like, all right, I'm not going to focus so much on getting 50 goals. Uh, he was definitely playing more of two-way hockey. He's, you, seen, he's seen Sid win enough cups. Yeah. He's like, fuck that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you added into the lineup, added so much grit and balance and depth to the lineup, and it felt like for us as fans watching, and not, not even fans of, of Caps, just like, you know, fans of the game, that year felt different early. Like watching mm -hmm. that Capitals team, we were like, oh, fuck, this team might have it. Did you guys feel that? Because I know it's such a long season, but early days, you know, October, November, December, were you guys like, guys, we got a fucking shot here? Or were there some crazy ups and downs where you weren't totally sure? Uh, yeah, there, there was definitely some up and downs. I think, you know, when I went in at the start, the training camp, camp was a little bit weird because I think the year before kind of lingered. Um, I think guys were still pissed and kind of down and maybe looking towards, all right, let's get through all this garbage in the early and let's get to the playoffs. And 
it doesn't really work like that. You still got to play the games and stuff like that. So <clears throat> at the start, you know, I think we started okay, but then I think we lost like seven or eight in a row. And one night in Colorado, we got like smoked, like destroyed. And Trotsy came in, who's a pretty chill guy. Yeah. And he like, he ripped everyone. Like he, he ripped into every single guy. And, and I think the next game, it was kind of like, all right, we need to win or, you know, Trotsy's gone or someone's getting, well, I'm getting traded. And it wouldn't be the big guys, like someone's yeah, getting yeah. moved or whatever's happening. <clears throat> and I think we still lost the next game. And then we we're kind of like, well, I guess that's it for Trotsy or something's going to happen. And from that day, after we lost that next game, I, we we just went on like this heat or everyone <clears throat> bought in. Everyone, you know, went into their slot. The, the lineup was kind of like in flux before. I think, you know, Tom started on like the third line. Like I was playing with Ovi sometimes. It was like yeah. the lineup at the end wasn't how – it was so weird. But, um, you know, everyone got put in their spot. Tom went up to the first line. You know, I went back to the fourth line, me and um, Stevie and Beagle, and you know, we figured it out. Um, the top guys figured it out, and we just we just rolled all the way through. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> even still, you look at the playoff format, you're like, oh, God, we got to play the Penguins again. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and um, I don't know. I, I, I obviously didn't carry that, like, scar tissue into that series. I didn't really um, – I wasn't there for the other ones, right? So – that wasn't really on my mind. I think it may be on other guys' mind. We, the first game, we were up like two or three nothing. We lost, and it's kind of like, oh god, like here we go again. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, um, we we kept pushing, and um, we won without Backy. Backy had a broken hand. Oh my god, um, I forgot got about suspended. that. Yeah, yeah. Dude. yeah. So game six, we go in there without <clears throat> Tom, Backy, and Burakovsky. So that's guys on each line. And it's like, well, you know, yeah. here we go again. But we, we pulled it out in that game six. And after that, it was <clears throat> obviously not smooth sailing. There's some tough games ahead, but um, the confidence after that was insane. Oh, I can only imagine. Because, I, you know, like we always joke, guys our age, you know, like all, all three of us are kind of the same age. Uh, guys mm. all of our age kind of had to either pick Crosby or Ovi in those early yeah. days, you know? Yeah. And, you know, after Crosby had had so much success, I was such an Ovi guy, and I was like, come on, get one, yeah. man, get one. Yeah. And that series, yeah. go, I, going into that game six, I was like, oh, fuck, just fucking please, God, finish this and and get the yeah. monkey off the back. And it was, for, you know, like I was saying earlier, watching, it felt like that momentum there was just through the roof. And it was like, how do you not go and yeah. do it now? So you yeah, guys like really the did. The celebration on the ice was like, it was a lot like, the, I think they have a little behind the scenes thing on maybe the Capitals YouTube, but like the celebration in the room, like you would have thought we won. Like yeah, we yeah, were yeah, going yeah, crazy. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, Trotsy comes in. It's like, well, like we're only halfway guys, but yeah. like we, we obviously knew. Um, and then we went into Tampa and like those first two games in Tampa, like we smoked them. Yeah. yeah. Like we were playing, we were, we were playing ridiculous without Backy. Um, I think Tom came back for the first game, but um, obviously they came back in the series, went to seven, but whatever. But like we were, we were riding high, and it was going to be tough for any team to beat us four yeah, seven yeah. after that. Devo, the was Ovi ever? Because um, you know we all believe he's gonna, he is gonna break the record, and it's awesome. You know, and I can't wait yeah. till it happens. We're all pulling for him. Was he ever uh, like you were talking about um, Timu early when you were a kid? Like, you see me there? Was he was Ovi ever like you yeah. see me in the slot there, oh. guy? Or like what? Oh. <laughs> yeah, what was oh. what was it like yeah. being on his line, bro? <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, at nineteen, it was like I, I said I was nervous, and like still at twenty, I don't know how it was at like twenty six, like. You know, I think I had obviously I was more confident and but still sometimes you get it and the first thing you do is like, all right, where is Obi? Where <laughs> yeah. is he? Where is he? And and if you don't find him, I, I promise he'll tell you. He'll tell you. He tells <laughs> Kuzi in Russian, he'll tell whoever, <laughs> like and it, and it's not in a bad way. He's not like belittling you, but it's like, hey, like I'm there. Yep. Like, I'm always open. He's yeah. he, he is intense. He is like he's once the game starts, like before the game, it's all fun and jokes. And but out there, like he he wants to make a difference. And um, like I said, like uh, 
whenever you get it, you you know he only has a couple spots, but yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes it just doesn't work like that, right? So it's just like, I, like I'm trying, though. like I'm yeah, trying. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like trust but me, dude. I'm doing my best. Is it me? I'm not Backstrom, but you know they're obviously trying to cover you as well. So like it's not that easy. I know backing makes it seem super easy but it's just not i'm sorry how um i, I always kind of revel at this i i love it that ovi's you know he's approaching 40 here and you watch him out there and he'll score a goal and he still looks like he's 18 years old the way he celebrates oh, yeah. the way he loves the yeah. game how contagious yeah. is that that your leader best player this generational guy is just still carrying that intense of a passion and love for the game every single day yeah, definitely. It definitely props you up. I think especially in the playoffs, too, he would score some goals at home and he would be freaking out. And the crowd obviously loves it. <laughs> and, um, you know, you use that momentum um, to kind of push forward. But whenever you see a guy like that, he just he still loves it. He still enjoys it. And it's not like he's aware of the record, but he loves scoring, you know, to go up to one. Like he loves yeah. scoring to get the winning goal. He He's not he knows the record he's aware of it obviously but he, he's not you know cherry picking he's not all right if we lose 7-1 and i score it's fine like after that game if he scored and they lost 7-1 he's pissed off so yeah. um I, I think that's what makes him such a great captain what makes him such a good guy is that we're, we're all aware of this this rec record we're all aware that we're all trying to you know slide it over to him get it to him but yeah um, he, he wants to, to score the winning goal. He doesn't want to just score and, and the team loses. Yeah. Yep. Devo, the, uh, I've heard you say, <clears throat> I've heard you say that the, uh, you're not a very superstitious guy normally, but we all know that that cap scene was crazy. So they got the, oh. everybody's got the, there's 20 oh handshakes God. and the fucking, if you throw the tape to this guy, you got to do that again every day. Right. So all that shit. But one thing I saw that you said was the boys were playing a lot of Mario Kart. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, dude, oh yeah. who was? Yeah. Are we talking like N sixty four? I need to know everything. Like who N64, was playing? Yeah. Who Fuck was winning? Yeah, yeah yes. like well, how? Tell me about the Mario Kart situation. Yeah, so well, the super like the superstitions were it was out of control. Like I, I, I'm not superstitious at all. You know, I go to the first game. You know, everyone is just like doing something like yeah. <laughs> on time at the same person, same. T it was. And then, I, and then I just slowly get into that, too. So I start doing stuff, yeah. and, like, I'm not even superstitious. Like, it was it was insane. And there's some things that guys are doing that, like, I don't even know if they would want me to say. What's, <laughs> the, what's, the, so what's the craziest one? On. What's the craziest one yeah, that you, you can got, say? you got to yeah. give us oh, one I, crazy I actually, one. Like, <laughs> I actually can't even say some of them. They're not, like, too bad, but I don't even think they want people knowing. Yeah, but, like, they don't want the public knowing that they're full-on psychopaths. <laughs> yes, yes. So there's just so much going on. But uh, <laughs> I, I, it, it was amazing. And then as soon as I leave the team, like, I just don't do it anymore. It yeah, just, yeah. Like, it shuts off. Yeah, it shuts off. But so, what was the even the original question? Mario Kart, so, Mario Kart. Tell me yeah, about Mario, Mario Kart. Kart yeah. Sorry. So um, in the playoffs... You know, we would get like a big suite or whatever, a big ballroom, um, trying to figure out some things to do. Um, so like guys, you know, my generation are PlayStation. So we'd have like the PS4 or five or whatever it was out at that time. And then the older guys, Carly, Beagle, Oshi, they had the N64, <laughs> like on another TV to the side. So they're, that's what they played when they were young. I mean, so did I, but they're yeah, a little yeah. bit older than me. Yeah. Um, so they were they were more into that and they would just rip that all day we we wouldn't really practice during the during the playoffs <clears throat> so no matter where we were we you know we play a game the next day would be off yep so you know at 11 o'clock noon everyone would just go down there and just chill and play video games and a lot of mario kart was going on um, <laughs> i don't even know who the best player was but i was more of a fifa guy during the playoffs yeah nice okay nice guys. okay if you did get yeah. on the sticks in mario kart which character were you choosing um, I think I was always just Mario. I don't, I don't classic. I, yeah, I respect classic, that. Classic, yeah. safe. Yeah, I'm a Luigi so, guy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Yoshi guy. guy, which also I used to think was cool, but I now think a lot of people are Yoshi guys, so maybe it wasn't yeah, as unique was... as I thought, but <laughs> but I do honest, like Yoshi. This might be the first time I've ever admitted this. I, that's why I was a Luigi guy, because I was like, no one picks Luigi. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I was cool. just trying to show Luigi some <laughs> yeah. love, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um. Well, man, we're talking about this playoff run. Holy shit. 
We got to get deep into the weeds here. I mean, you guy goes nuclear. Absolutely dude. buzzing, dude. Seven goals, two game winners. You had that unbelievable tying goal with like five minutes left, ten minutes left, whatever it was, and then obviously you had the go ahead goal in game five, dude. Out, you like we're talking out of body. We're talking yeah. white men can't jump. You were in a fucking zone, <laughs> man. Like that was a zone, and and like the, there was truly lore about you going on with Caps fans during those playoffs. Dude, mm. dude, did you see, you know, the um, the Vince McMahon meme that was going around, like, where he's crying and he's, like, waving off the camera? Yeah, it was special. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was special. That, I've seen those with you. Like, it's like, <laughs> Dad, tell me about Devo in the 2018 playoffs, and it's Vince McMahon <laughs> cutting, crying, cutting the camera. Like, that's how special it was. So, like, what was going on with you, man? Like, were, did you truly feel like every time you stepped on the ice, you were like, I am buzzing right now? Or were you just, like, locked in, just, like, play another game? Yeah, I don't know. I Like... You know, if I could channel that through 82 games, I'd be on an eight-year deal right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know what it was. I mean, like, I'm obviously extremely competitive. Um, and, and I don't know. Playoffs has kind of always been, you know, in junior. Um, I think I led the league in playoff goals. Uh, I think I led Anaheim in playoff goals when I was 21 or whatever. I think it's just – I don't know what it is. I think I, I enjoy – you know the spotlight and everyone watching and it's on cbc at home it's on nbc or whatever at the time um uh, and i just want to win so <clears throat> i i don't know what it, i don't know exactly what it is like i said if i could bottle it up yeah we're talking, yeah. Uh, we're talking eight by eight right yeah now, yeah yeah, but, yeah easily but <laughs> but um i i just uh, i hate losing i'm just extremely competitive and um you know, I just tried to help out any way I could. And, and then that um, instance, it just happened to be goals. You know, I, I wanted to block shots. You know, I blocked a couple of shots off my head, helped put a couple in the <laughs> face. Like, I, yep. I just wanted to do anything um, to help the team. And um, it just so happened that, you know, I was getting some chances and um, bearing down. Hell yeah, man. Were, were yeah. the boys treating you any differently or, you know, like, yeah, what were the superstitions? They're like, don't touch yeah. Devo, dude. Yeah. He's too hot. So it was like, no one can uh, even look at Devo right yeah. now. <laughs> no, we're we're still doing the uh, superstition, but it, it's. Fun. I don't think anyone. I don't think I've ever told anyone, but um, well, some people know. But um, before the playoffs started in practice, I was using like TJ Oshie sticks, and I was just like, I was just sniping. Like I was like, it was crazy. So, but in the first game of the playoffs, like I didn't want to use it just it's the playoffs let me just and then i ended up scoring and then i didn't score the next game and then i i instantly just switched to ochi sticks so i used his sticks um the rest of the playoffs with his name on it i think i got my custom ones maybe in like the finals or something but um so maybe it was a stick I don't no know. way dude but i changed it was completely different curve completely different stick everything and wow and that's what i that's what i used different curve playoffs. dude you just went yeah. different yeah. curve in the playoffs yeah, yeah. We might need to change the record books here and give Osh at least an assist on all of this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, give, him, give, him a, give him a couple of assists. Yeah, right? Yeah, wow. so it was crazy because, um, yeah, like I, I never changed anything. I had the same – I changed my curve a couple of times in my life, but before then I used it the whole year, literally used it the first game scored. Um, I mean, obviously, if people watched like super closely, you'd see I was using a warrior the first game, and then I was using a bower like yeah. every game after that, which was ultra stick stuff. So. Yeah, dude. Daddy. I'm curious if like any of the super superstitious guys on that team were appalled by yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, they didn't like that. Oh yeah, they were probably disgusted. Yeah, <laughs> like, disgusted. They're like, what the it. fuck is this guy doing? And then it's just yeah. working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could actually see. I think uh, in Columbus in Game Six when I scored like when I was coming to the bench, everyone is looking at their stick and I'm looking at my stick because everyone knew like I changed yeah. and going into it. So um, I guess they're okay with it then. That's hilarious. Yeah. Dude, and we, we I've heard you say, um, you know, because people will say this all the time, like, oh, I blacked out, but I've heard you say like, truly, I barely I barely remember the aftermath of that game tie or game five. Did yeah. that ever sink in? And you, I know you must have the picture fucking everywhere. It's the sickest picture oh, yeah. I've ever seen. But did, oh, when yeah. did that sink in? Because obviously the team goal was much bigger. Like you guys won the cup that yeah. night. But just yeah. was there a moment 10 days later you were at home like, holy fuck, that was a massive goal. Yeah, you're right. 10 days later after we were done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 10 days later after we were done, like you kind of, um, I, I would went back and like watched kind of all the games and 
um, watch like that third period and in, in full. And I mean, I've watched that goal pff, ten thousand <laughs> times by now. But that's um, low, just, dude. That's low. <laughs> yeah, but but after that, yeah, like probably ten days, I actually watched back and um, watching slow mo every angle. And was just like, wow, like that was pff, that was pretty nice. That was crazy though. But oh yeah, um, at the time, like. It truly was a blackout. Like I yeah. truly blacked out. I, you could even see it on my face after our, you know I did like a little tumble and looked up. Like I was like, "Holy shit!" Yes. Yeah. <laughs> God, dude, what a moment! It's so and this so nifty little stick, to skate to stick. Like, dude, they had it all, man. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. another another uh, little tidbit. Like again, Oshi, um, he would always have like all of us, you know, younger guys, right wingers. We would always do like these, they're just silly drills, like shooting off, off weird angles and kicking it off your feet and getting a bad pass and using your feet. And I don't think we ever scored a goal like that. And then in the finals, O scored one. Um, I scored another one with my foot. So we scored three goals, like pretty much doing these drills that, that he had done all year. It was, it all just came together. Makes all the difference. Perfect time. So yeah. awesome, dude. Yeah. Um, that I mean, dude, that cup celebration has resulted in some of the best photos I've ever seen. How was that party? I mean, that must have been the biggest rip of your life. Yeah, yeah. The, well, the the one at Vegas was insane. <laughs> Obviously, it was like an earlier game, so we had like a lot of time. Uh, I think the game might have been at three or five that day, local time. So we we had a lot of time to party that night. Yeah. Um, no food. I think I had like one slice of pizza. So we did that. We flew back on the plane. Like guys are kind of trying to sleep, but like, why would you sleep? Right? Yeah, and, come and on. Crazy. And then we have to leave our cars at the airport because no one can drive. Yeah. <laughs> we, get a, we get a bus back. Like they're like, all right, 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes to change. Like I'm dying still at this point, but you have 10 minutes to change. We go right to Georgetown. I think that's when like all the the fountain and all that stuff it yeah, was yeah, yeah. it was non-stop like 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 you said 10 days i think the mary guys uh, the guys with kids tapped out probably at like six or seven you know we had a little crew we had a little crew that went up yeah <laughs> the, the, the double over, digit crew dude the course. double digit crew is legit yeah yeah we, we had a little crew that went a couple of days longer but my birthday was actually i guess it would have been a week later and even that night, I was like, I can't, like, I can't, I can't do anything. I yeah. can't, I, wow. I can't drink anymore. Like, I can't. And we, we still went out and we still, <laughs> we still did it. But like, yeah, after that, I, I didn't want to see uh, a Bud Light or uh, anything for a long time. It was yep. crazy. Did, uh, who partied harder, o Osh or Ovi? <laughs> It's, it's tight. Right? Sure. Like, that's it's, what I'm saying. Like, but tight. between OSHA's beer monster and OV diving through fountains, like it's that they yeah. were, they had a neck and neck battle going on. It, it was tight. It was tight. But I think, uh, what maybe made OV go long, he got the cup like really, like really quickly after. So I think he just held on to it, held on to it. And then he got the cup. And then obviously the cup party day is like crazy. So, yeah. Uh, he might have kept it going a little bit longer, but it was a tight race for sure. <laughs> po I can't even fathom with how OV is pregame. I can't even fathom post cup OV. Oh my like, god, that oh. just must be a different animal. It was, it was a lot. It was a <laughs> lot. I mean, the the thing about that team as a whole is that we 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 partied all, all through the year. Like, yeah, not obviously at like that, but um, any excuse to have like a team dinner and a couple drinks, like. You know, someone signed, someone got a new girlfriend, somebody <laughs> bought a house, somebody got a dog, somebody, anything. It was like, all right, well, team dinner, and we yeah. would all go out. And, and, and like, you know, the coaching staff knew. So, you know, the next day, the practice would be, you know, a little bit harder, but we were doing it together. So um, I think that's one thing that, you know, I think good, to, I think I would hope good teams are still doing that, but any good team I've been on is, you know, everyone's hanging out together, have a couple of drinks the next day. We all sweat it out together and, yep. and then we get, that, <laughs> yep. get down to business, you know? That's yeah. awesome. We've talked to some guys on Tampa when they were on their run and they say a similar thing where it's like that yeah. veteran group, they know, you know, you know what it takes to work, work it out on the ice and then have a good time after. Yeah, and that, any, that's any a big good deal. Team, any good team that I've been on is it's like, all right, well, 
we're all going out tomorrow practice. Like, let's just get through it together. You know, you know, pick each other up, make sure everyone's uh, feeling good, make sure no one uh, misses the bus or is sleeping yeah, yeah. in, and, and we're all in this together. So, Buddy system, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that team was like that, and, and we had a lot of fun. We, we had a lot of fun. So, um, you know, the world got to see how we operated throughout yeah, the year. Yeah, that's Hell epic. Yeah. That's epic. <laughs> Everyone, I want to take a quick break to talk to you about my favorite canned cocktail in the game right now, and that is Ricky. Ricky Spirits is changing the game. Let's be honest. Beers, they're always going to be there, but they're out of season, man. Beers fill you up way too much. You get bloated. That same taste over and over again. It gets a little boring. Canned cocktails are where it's at, and we've seen all these different ones, but I'm here to tell you that Ricky is truly the best in the game right now. I'm completely off beer, so I'm all about my canned cocktails, and I'm not talking about seltzers. Seltzers are the worst. They taste like chalk. They make you feel disgusting. Canned cocktails are where it's at, and Ricky has the best in the business. They're doing unbelievable flavors in both vodka and tequila. If you want to have a nice cranberry one, it tastes like a Cosmo. You want to feel more summery, we've got these unbelievable grapefruit and watermelon flavors. Watermelon tequila is the best canned cocktail I've ever had in my entire life from Ricky. It's unbelievable. And I'll tell you why. Each can is just 130 calories. There's no added sugars. These things are made from all natural fruit juice and they're 7% ABV. That's one and a half shots per drink. So you're not gassing a million of them to get a buzz. You're feeling amazing after just one and then every single one after that tastes just as good as the first. Ricky has been changing the game for me personally. Every time I bring it, golfing has been huge recently. Love a nice transfusion on the golf course, but Sometimes these prices are over overpriced or the, the courses are overpriced, all that stuff. With Ricky, I pack up that bag and then everyone is hounding me for another one when we're on the course. I'm bringing them to parties during the summer, stocking up the cooler. We got this unbelievable golf tournament we're doing with a bunch of the boys up in San Francisco and we're going to have Ricky stocked in every single cart and at every single hole because it is without a doubt the best drink to have when it comes to canned cocktails. So go to rickyspirits.com, figure out your closest Real retailer, figure out where you can get it shipped because if you're not drinking Ricky, you're making a mistake and you're harming yourself. Get on board this train right now because we are chugging along and it is the best drink in the game. Pausing the podcast really quick to talk to you guys about our new partnership with CBDMD. It's a great situation. I really want you to check it out because listen, we all got issues in our life. We're having sleepless nights, we're having stress, we're having anxiety. CBD is super versatile. It's gonna help with sleep. It's gonna help with focus. It's gonna help with recovery. All things we all need in our day-to-day -day life. Self-care, mental health is so crucial. I cannot stress that enough. It's so, so crucial. And this company is here to help. And it's so legit, okay? It's US grown hemp. It's rigorously tested by third parties to make sure everything's up to top, top quality. And top quality doesn't necessarily mean high prices because you're getting a great deal with this stuff. So if you go to www.cbdmd.com and then you use promo code NETTERS, that's N-E-T-T-E-R-S, you get 30% off, 3-0, 30% off and free shipping for all your CBD and THC products. So please take advantage of this opportunity because the product is so good, it's so versatile and could be exactly what you need getting through those challenges of day-to-day -day life. Don't forget promo code NETTERS. Babes, by now you know that we have teamed up with BetMGM. It is the best gambling platform that exists in the entire universe because they have everything that you could ever want. They got props galore. They got every sport. Right now we've got Olympic action out the wazoo. And if you sign up right now for BetMGM with promo code NETTERS, N-E-T-T-E-R-S, listen to this deal. You can bet up to 1500 bucks on anything you want. And if you lose you get it all back right into your account to play again. Unbelievable stuff. We've got hockey season coming around the corner and you know that we've got all the best picks here at Empty Netters. So make sure you get in the action, join us on this fun ride with BetMGM and make sure that you are having the best time ever with the best app ever. BetMGM has got you covered. There is nothing like it. Sign up today.
Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369 in New York. Call 1-800-327-5050 in Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP in Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. 1-800-981-0023 in Puerto Rico or visit www.1800gambler.net in West Virginia. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Devo, on a, on a more serious note, and I hope this is okay to talk about, but yeah. there's been countless times throughout your career where you've dealt with racism in the league. Right. And yeah. I think the one that stands out for most fans is that night in Chicago, mm-hmm. which was dad's night for you guys. Christ. And your mom's yeah. watching on TV and everything in the penalty box. And as infuriating and disappointing as those instances must be for you, could you tell us just what it is in you that has helped focus on the positives, keep you grounded, keep you within yourself to, to push through that nonsense? <clears throat> um, I, I think I'm sorry, I think I also tell you know, kids when I'm talking to them is, you know, I'm not going to let the, the ignorance of one or two people um, kind of stop my dreams and what, what I, I want to get done. Um, you know, hockey's filled with amazing, a lot of amazing, amazing people. I'm not going to let, you know, these random fans that don't know me or know anyone else, um, you know, kind of make me not love the game. Um, you know, after that it happened in Chicago, I come into the room and people from all face of life, you know, Russians, Canadians, they're all asking if I'm okay. I'm saying, you know, that's wrong. And, you know, where is this guy? Let's get, you know, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So it's like, I'm not going to let the, you know, some dummy, um, you know, make me hate the game and make me not um, think this game is filled with a lot of good people. So that's what I tell young kids. I mean, things are going to happen. That's, it's sad that, you know, things are going to happen, but um, don't let that, that one person get in the way of whatever you're trying to accomplish. And um, you're going to meet, you know, 99.9% of people in hockey you're going to meet are, are, are not going to think that way and um, are going to love you for you. So, yeah. Yeah, dude. And I commend you so much for continuing to always be a role model and setting an incredible Thank example yeah. for and the people coming after you. I think that's really special. That To add to that, on the other side, uh, you know, how, how empowering and, and uplifting has it been to be so involved in awesome moments like, you know, the Black History Month things going on in the league, the amazing mm-hmm. nights you had in Washington, growing up being a huge fan of Jerome McGinley to your, you know, kind of final years when you're playing in Ontario and you're on a line with a keel and Q, first yeah. black line in Ontario Reign history, like seeing how awesome the black community in the NHL is becoming and sort of inspiring young black players to keep chasing their dreams, like that must be a really awesome moment. Yeah, it's definitely one of the things I'm um, proud of that's that I've done in hockey that's not, you know, a playing accomplishment. Um, you know, I, I look at when I was younger, I met, you know, Chris Stewart, Anthony Stewart, um, Wayne Simmons, Joel Ward when I was 14, 15. Um, and they kind of showed me the way and helped me out a lot, um, get to where I needed to go. So that's just me paying it forward. Those guys did it for me. Um, I enjoy going to hockey camps and, and talking to to kids and, and just telling my story and saying, you know, you can do it. Those guys were the guys who showed me that guys from Scarborough, Ontario, they live five minutes from me. Yeah. Um, show me that it's possible. Um, so if I could be that inspiration to another kid, it's um, um, even if it's just one kid who ends up making it, that's, that's, uh, that's fine with me. So, um, and going to play with Akil and, and Q, that was, uh, it, it's so funny because I always just, was one of the younger guys on the te- on on a team, and even in Washington at 26, like there was a lot of guys older than me. Um, and then I go play with them, and I'm 29 or whatever, and these guys are they're 19, 12, yeah, 18 and 20, <laughs> yeah. and I'm just like, oh my god, I'm the old grumpy guy now, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, getting a chance to to see those guys start their professional career and. Um, you know, I try. I tried to help them as much as you know. I, I've seen it all. I've seen. I, I've seen everything in this game. Yeah. Um, heard just about everything. So to be able to just to um, spread my knowledge and, and those guys have you know called me and texted me when they had um, anything going on, just trying to pick my brain and any problem they came with, I I, 
I had definitely seen it before. So I yeah. feel like I kind of knew how to operate. Um, but, but I, I love being able to just help the, um, younger players and, you know, obviously Q is doing great. Um, and Akil had a good end of the year too. So yeah. it's, it's, I'm happy for those guys. Yeah. They're studs, man. It's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, kicking away from the NHL and talking about kind of your last year in the KHL. What a wild ride for you. First of all, yeah. you're playing for Red Star in Beijing. You've said a bunch of times that Beijing, other than the language barrier, just like awesome city, used to, you know, growing up in Toronto, you used to a big city. You had a lot of English speaking guys on the team, so it wasn't that bad. But then this little thing called COVID comes around. Yeah. What was that experience like? I think you said uh, it was like 18 months before you could go back to your place and like get your shit because <laughs> you left yeah. from Russia, right? Like, yeah. what the so hell was I going on? I couldn't even go back. Um, yeah, so we were leaving on the road. Um, it, was, it's, it was hard to get like information there. You know what I mean? I just hear. Yeah, true. Yeah, I didn't even think about virus that. Virus. Yeah. <laughs> you know, without saying too much, you, you can't really get information there. Right? So, um, you know, how we're leaving for two weeks. On the, to, we're going on a road trip anyway. Pack for three weeks, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> and like, as soon as we like landed in Russia, you know, you like, you go on um, Instagram and Twitter, and oh, they like literally like blocked off the neighborhood that we were living, and <laughs> no one can leave. It's like, <laughs> all right, here we go. So we we played. At, we were on the road anyway. We play, we play, and then you know that extra week, it's like, all right, we have to live in like. I think we went to Siberia for a bit. Which sounds like a joke. <laughs> yeah. Which, like, right? like, <laughs> but but like, it's, it's a nice yeah. place. Yeah, it I is know. a nice place. <laughs> it's just minus 80. Yeah, like, it's yeah. a nice place. Though. So we go there for a bit. We play like our supposed home games there. We moved to like Moscow for a bit, which was like an awful idea because it's extremely fun there. Yeah, <laughs> and, like, yeah. It, yeah. Like, it was just a bad idea. But, Not a lot of isolating going on in Moscow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and then we just kept moving around, moving around. It's like, yeah, I don't think we're going to go back. So just fly home and then, you know, we'll send your stuff. Okay, sure. And yeah. then, so we go, I remember, you know, walking through JFK without a mask. No one has a mask on. And then I go home and like, there's obviously outbreaks everywhere. Yep. And I'm sick. And like, I felt like death at that point. Like I was dying that day. Yeah. yeah. It was just bad. So I'm trying to talk to the, the guy who um, is trying to get our stuff. And like, you know, there's time difference. There's like, I can't even use like WhatsApp. I have to use that app. Like what's the app called? WeChat or whatever. It's just <laughs> yeah. like, it's just not helping. I have so much stuff there. He says it's on the way, like for like a year. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, someone's, someone's carrying it, later, dude. He's walking it there. It will be yes, there in a year. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> and then, like, 18 months later, literally, it just shows up on my front door. Half the stuff just not in there. But, Come like, on, whatever. Dude. Like, it yeah. just, it was a hassle. Like, it, I wish, you know, it was a fun experience, like, the KHL as a whole. I just happened to go at the, the wrong year. I Hold guess. on. Did you actually never get back to that apartment? No, I never went back. I never went back to China. Some dude's got half Devo's clothes and Seriously? his bronze medal from the World oh, Juniors. Yeah. It's <laughs> fucking, <laughs> like, it's fucking. Cool. Yeah. So, like, I had, like, I had a lot of stuff there. Yeah. yeah. And, you and know, now half of it's half gone. Of the, yeah, half of it's just gone. Like, it's just, and you can't even keep track. It was so long ago that I'm like, who, who knows? I yeah. don't even remember, like, what was there. Like, yeah. So could you, the, could the you team, find the, the place services there has got a couple of nice jackets. So I guess yeah. Yeah. Them. Do you remember where it, could we find the place now? Like if we go to Beijing, could you be like, this is my apartment? I mean, it was like a Ritz Carlton. So okay. Like, yeah. 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 I yeah. don't know how many we'll put eyes were. on it. Like, we'll put eyes yeah. on it. <laughs> we can yeah. Get in there. It, it was, it was super nice. Like it was really nice. Oh yeah. Like, like I said, just the, the language barrier, which like, you know, uh, whatever. But, um, it was a fun couple months. The the traveling and the stuff that happened after COVID were, were insane. Craziness, but, yeah. man. Um, we made it back. It's all good. Yep. Do you have a uh, a moment that sticks out that was your first like, oh, I'm in the KHL moment, whether it be like guys hitting the Russian gas or like crazy coaching <laughs> situations? Like what was your first? Um, Holy shit, so this like, is different. We, we had an all North American team. So like um, it was pretty like normal that way. Yeah. Um, I think the... 
like getting off the plane and like the bus not being there for like an hour or yeah. like two hours <laughs> and we're like standing outside in like minus whatever i think that happened a couple times so like one of my first trips like we got out of the airport and like all right where's the bus like oh it's not supposed to be here for two hours like well why like well, yeah 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 who scheduled like, that <laughs> yeah who scheduled that is and we're just standing outside and like sometimes you'd have some people would take the uber i think it's called uh, yandex there and like some people just uber to where they're going but like i'm new i don't know where i'm going so there were some of those moments um <laughs> And there's some hotels where we pull up and I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this isn't, uh, you're like, I'll sleep on the seasons. bus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. So but overall, I mean, overall it was, it was cool. Um, I mean, it, it was whatever it was, what it yeah. was. I yeah. got paid to play hockey. Hell yeah. We'll take it. We'll take it. I got to go to Dubai and South Korea. Like so sick, dude. Yeah, like that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so and it is what it is. Then, and when you finally did hang him up with a beautiful message to, you know, everybody that mattered to you, uh, you, you're a radio guy now, dude, you got a microphone. And I wanted to ask, man, cause you had your debut, um, this November, right? Against uh, cap sharks game. You're doing John yeah. Walton color, uh, play, uh, you're doing color with John on the, on the caps broadcast on the radio. Mm -hmm. And I heard you got some really cool quotes, like it's time to love hockey from a different angle and that you were interested mm -hmm. in this right away. Um, so a lot of guys, a lot of guys find the game again in various ways. So I'm just curious what about this called to you so much and, and, and how you're liking it. Um, so originally, uh, some, one of the guys from TSN, like he like met my mom at like some gala or something. And like, so he was just like asking her, like, does he want to do TV? Does he want to do this? And I was always just like, no, no, yeah, no, yeah. No. And then towards the end i'm like working on the summer i'm just like not really i don't really have the itch anymore to play i'm just kind of going through it um i called them so i did some stuff for tsn originally and it was cool i didn't mind it it wasn't live or anything at that point so it's like whatever and then i did um the first like big thing i did was world championships on tv mm, sick <clears throat> and i enjoyed like that process like it was tough because we're doing you know, I wasn't doing Canada, USA. I was doing like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kazakhstan, Austria, whoever, yeah. you know, so it was a little tough that way, but like the process and everything was, was fun. Um, and then I got a chance to go to DC for that black history um, game. And they, they were, they were coming up with a new network uh, monumental for their, uh, you know, local networking and, they were having this new studio, all this stuff. So they asked me, hey, are you interested in doing like pregame, postgame there? Um, and I was like, sure, I'll try it. I don't know. Like, I yeah, guess. Yeah. And, and I, I, I ended up like really enjoying it. So, you know, the radio stuff was, uh, I was just kind of filling in and that was cool. I think I liked more of the, uh, you know, pregame, postgame, intermission type stuff. Um, so I did about, I don't know, 15, 20 games last year um, in DC and, um, more to come next year. So fuck yeah, man. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's so cool. And, uh, all right, before we kick you to our last game, the listeners know that you, or that we've got this awesome <clears throat> half moon Bay golf tournament coming up and I'm not sure if they know that you're playing in it. So you mentioned like when you're in Anaheim, you wish you were golfing more. You've been golfing. Now you're entering the pro athlete golf tour with us up in San Francisco. How are you feeling? I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought he was going to be like, dude, I'm dialed in. I've been playing for a month yeah. straight. I'm so nervous. Like, I, I'm just nervous about, like, you know, if I hit it out of bounds, of, like, just being on the tee, like, shooting 11 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just, like, that's the only, I, I'm okay. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to win. Yeah. But it's but, handicapped, dude. We got It is a hard track, I got to say. But, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so, I'm just, I'm just nervous about, like, because some days I could go out there and I'll, I'll be so good. I'll yep. be so good. Oh, but yeah. then, you know. That's golf. Some days I'm just not. So, yep. what's Where's the weakness in the game? Well, is it off the tee? Is I'm, it the flat stick? I'm going to yeah. say the jitters on that first tee. For everyone, oh, is going to be yeah, like, yeah. fuck me. Are you it's kidding it's me? like, I don't know. I, I love golf so much. Me but too, like, dude. I don't understand it. It's just, you know, when I first started playing, I was, I, you know, I couldn't hit an iron, obviously. But I would drive everything down the middle. And now, like, my That's irons good. are pretty good, but now I can't drive anything. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't what know happened? What it is. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Like, I have no idea. And I've been trying to figure it out. So, I'm just nervous about, like, 
being in the bushes all day. So that's that's yeah, pretty yeah. Because that's that. There's a quick way to not have fun playing golf. Yeah. Is when I'm in yeah. the bushes the but entire I mean, day. I, you know, Delhi. I've known Delhi forever, and he was, you know, pushing me. I saw him in New York City, and he was pushing me to do this. And I know if he's like flying cross country, and like down to do something it's going to be fun so yeah i said i'll do it and hey, exactly and we're, we're going to be there we're going to keep the drinks flowing we're going to keep the yeah. chatter high it's going to be a good time yeah. and listen dude like go like the way golf goes one good shot bro you stuff one to two feet on on nhl network at half moon bay and then we're laughing dude you know <laughs> yeah. what i mean yeah i guess so but and then i missed the putt like that's yeah. what happened no we won't <laughs> what happened. we we'll won't cut, air that we'll we cut, won't air cut. that we won't air that <laughs> Yeah, so I, I got I got some. How long do I have here? I got some tightening up to do, but well, yep. right now I'm nervous. I'm yeah. nervous right now. That's okay. Nerves are good. Nerves means they you are. care. They are. Nerves means you care. <laughs> uh, okay, Devo, this is the last thing we do with everybody. Okay, it's a game we play. It's called Pass, Shoot, Score, and we pick some categories and we pick three things in those categories that we know or found out or have been told that you like, and you have to rank them. Pass, shoot, score. Your least favorite is pass because assists are cool, oh. but they ain't that cool. Shoot yeah. is your second favorite because we love putting pucks on net and of course score is going to be your favorite because goals are the ultimate goal. Okay, are you ready? Here's your first one. This category is Newport Beach Bars. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Pass, shoot, score. Sharkies, Mutt Lynches, or Cassidy's? I think Cassidy's is pass. Sh shoot would be... Ooh. <laughs> I think Mutt Lynch's is shoot and oh, scores. Sharkies. I went to Sharky's 70 straight Sundays. I think. <laughs> like it was, we had a good time. We got this one. We got this one from Tomer and he was like, we had, we had a few, <laughs> we had a few oh, ribs at those bars. A few yeah. Sharky's nights, eh? Yeah. Oh yeah. So I think, I think that's the, the right, the right order. Is right what, what was the Sunday situation there, dude? Um, so we used to play Sundays at like four, and Monday was just always off. Yep. Um, so I, I think all the younger guys, we lived, like I lived right on that start of that boardwalk there. So we would just walk over there Sundays and yeah, they kind of let us, uh, yeah. it was a free for all. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah they, they let us, uh, you know, run free. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Put it on my tab. Put it on my tab. Yeah. You had regular status <laughs> at Sharky's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. Newport's such a rip. I love it down there. Uh, beautiful <clears throat> all right devo here your ne next one is uh loves of your life okay pass shoot score the blue jays mm -hmm. the raptors mm -hmm. and emma watson <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm passing the blue jays for sure because wow. they always let you down or what yeah they're just trash <laughs> they're just they're just not oh um, god I'm gonna have to shoot with the Raptors and score. With them. Hey, <laughs> let's go. My dog, come that's on. my dog. Come on, dude. God, I'm have to. I mean, come on. Like Emma Watson was the crush for all of us growing oh, up. Oh, it's like, insane, yeah. dude. That first movie yeah. came out and I was finished. I yeah. was like, oh, there she is, Hermione, my love. Unbelievable. Is it? Is it? Well, I have two questions actually. The um, the Raptors title. That's an all-time memory, I imagine, though, right? Oh, you were yeah, fired yeah. up. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that four bouncer from Kawhi against Philly is like what really sticks out oh, for me. Dude. Yeah, that that whole run was um, it was crazy, and they actually won um, on my birthday. No way, so, like, we dude. Had, we had like a we had like a mixed celebration. It was that whole run. Like every time they won, I was like, I was celebrating. I was going out. Like, yeah. it was it was insane. Like um, the my trainer at the time after. <laughs> the Raptors won. He like texted me the next day, like congratulations, like so, like <laughs> like I was on the team. Like yeah, it yeah. was insane. Yeah. Like I that run was something. I mean, something. I think I might have cried that day when yep. they won. Oh, like dude, there was sure. something. You know, I, I'm never gonna see again. And yeah. Who thought we would ever see that in our lifetime? Yeah. Insane. I, I think it's awesome how Kawhi has a key to the city, essentially in Toronto. Like he dude. came in, sell sword yeah. one year, got the ship, and was like, "All right, later, guys." And they're like, "Yeah, hey, we love he, you. He we love you." His job. He yeah. did his job. Exactly. Incredible. So yeah. And then my second question is: are, are you a Potter guy too, or just an Emma guy? No, I, I used to be a, a Potter 
guy. Yeah. Um, I haven't like, you know, the last two movies, maybe I didn't see, I don't know, but I used to, you used to, you've to, watched them all except the last two. <laughs> I th- I don't even know how many there are, but like when I when I was younger, I would watch all of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Devo, um, you got a long flight to SF. You might as well just dial back into those. I mean, come on. Yeah, I'm gonna be watching uh, golf videos. On the yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> swing tutorials, swing tutorials, swing tutorials. <laughs> okay, here's your next one, Devo. This category is goats in their field. Okay, it's mm-hmm. guys that you like. Pass, shoot, score. Floyd Money Mayweather, LeBron James, or Tom Brady. LeBron James score for sure. Yeah, I knew he was going to wow. say that. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Um, Are you watching the Olympics, dude? He's the best player on the court. He's 41. It's 40 ridiculous. 40 years old, too. Yeah, it's crazy. Absurd. It's insane. Um, I think uh, shoot Tom Brady. I like, I like Tom Brady. Yep. Um, I like Floyd, too, but he's not He's not those other guys. But Yeah, yeah, not quite. Not I think quite. that was the easiest one so far. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I, are you a McGregor <laughs> guy, too? I think I saw you were a McGregor guy. Um. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I think he's funny. Yeah, actually, yeah. Same. When I went to when I went to Vegas, uh, it was actually originally for his fight that got canceled. So. Oh, this most recent one. Yeah, dude, yeah, we were there so. too. I, we went to the fight. We were supposed to. Be, I was like, it's gonna be sick, and then it was a cool yeah. fight anyway. But I was bummed. That yeah, was to, good. Yeah, I was it, bummed. Saved, it saved me a lot of money because like I already decided like I'm gonna be close. You know, tickets are gonna be crazy yep. expensive, but. Um, they came, they came down after that. It saved me some money. Yep. Yeah, that was huge. That was huge. That. All right, your last one. This is one that I'm mostly curious of. Yeah, so this is funny. So I know that during your playing days, you weren't a big water guy. So this is thing. <laughs> I don't know. Corey, Corey Schneider started that, like, rumor. Haven't you noticed I pitched it? <laughs> yeah, today. Today. Yeah, listen, you've changed your ways. You've changed your ways. But all right, if you're not drinking water, pass, shoot, score, Gatorade, beer, or pop. I mean, in the summer, it's got to be score beer, no? Got to be. Out of Cold beer. Yeah. On the golf course? Like, what are we doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get a couple transfusions going, if too. If I'm not getting a beer, I'm probably getting a Gatorade on the golf course if it's on a water. Yep. Okay. So that's shoot. And yep. then, there you go. And then, what was the last one? Coke? Yeah, Coke. Yeah. yeah. That's the pop. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Corey Snyder started that rumor. I don't know where that came from. He's like, from. dude, I'm the most hydrated guy in the team. Shut the fuck up, Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Like, I think I had like a coke and intermission. I was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I all don't know of, where so, all of a sudden, he's just running his mouth. He's like, this dude, Devo yeah, doesn't drink fine. water. I, I, I love snides, but I, that's, he came up with that one. I don't know. That's so funny. I love. It. I want to keep it going. Yeah, yeah, you right. Start being like, the, I, when we're on the golf course, if someone hands you water, I'm be like, Diva doesn't drink water, dude. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, I'm just gonna smash it on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Just pours it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking A. It's beautiful. All right. Well, Devo, this has been unbelievable, man. You, you're you the best for coming on. We're going to be seeing you in about a month here. Less, having, dude. A couple yeah. weeks. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, a couple weeks. Um, but before we let you go, is there anything you want to plug? Anything you want to shout out? Stuff you're doing? Stuff you're working on? No, all right. You know, I'm not going to plug anything. I just want to say thanks for having me. Um, you know, we're going to have a good time in a couple weeks. And uh, wait, I never even asked. Are you guys good? I got like, are you guys good? Or dude, we we're, we're 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 pretty good, but we can't play, yeah. dude. We're plugs. We didn't play. In didn't the get National, an NHL so game. We don't get yeah. to play. Okay, okay. We'll get out well, there for a practice round before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe uh, on the Wednesday we can go. I'll try and get my flight earlier, and we can go for. A hey, there we go. There we I go. Love that. I love it. I love it. Perfect. All right. Well, you're Perfect. the best, brother. We'll uh, we'll have you on again soon, and we'll see you in a few weeks. Thanks, guys. Cool. Appreciate it. That was our interview with Devonte Smith Pelly. Huge thanks to Devo. What a beauty. What a guy. Can't wait to go have a blast with him at this golf tournament. Just like good vibes. Dude, he is he is, uh, he loves to laugh and I yeah. love that. Like I when he go when he starts doing like he, you can see him just remembering something yeah, and yeah. then just start like dying laughing. Head, it get, yeah. kills me every time. Yeah. So yeah, what an, what a joy it was spending an hour with him right now and I cannot wait to spend a week with him yeah. very soon. Just endless stories, good vibes, great perspectives. Such a good dude. Hope you enjoyed the interview as much as we did. And that is it for us for this episode. We will see you next week or next episode. I never remember when yeah. we're coming out here. But until then... Skate back or skate, skate hard. Skate ready. Skate ready. Ready back. Back ready. Any of them. Skate hard. <laughs>